And there we go. Good morning, all. How you doing? Good morning. I'm going to try to get the chat box up so that if anybody asks questions, there we go. <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen here. And what we're talking about today is, are your listings seen by other people via the internet? And I think Lance's method is going to show us our people for using the MLS see it. What I want to show you is the seller report and how the public facing portals get seen. So let me share my screen. And I want that screen right there. And I'm going to go to the dashboard. You guys can all see my screen, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. I am pretending to be, uh, oops, and I lost all my, I want to make sure I've got the participant box up so if somebody else joins. And the chat box, where did it go? There we got it. So if somebody asked questions. Um, I'm being Donna because I wanted to see what you guys get to see. So inside our Better KS dashboard, the thing that you guys go in and put all your paperwork and stuff in, we are only using like, uh, well, probably 20% of the overall capability to this thing. And I'm not going to try to push everybody out there to do everything it does. But this particular feature I found a lot easier than to try to find it in the greenhouse. In the greenhouse, you can search around for a while before you find the data that I'm about to show you. But our portal pulls that data over here for you and makes it into a seller report. So if you look at your listings, because that's the only thing you need a seller report for, you don't need a seller report for buyers, you'll see your active listings populate up through here. And I'm using Donna's because this was a fairly new listing, but it wasn't so old that it takes forever to pull data. And when you click on it, you'll see the place where you guys may be used to going in and putting your documents and uploading things. But at the bottom of it, Underneath the picture is this little tab that says seller report. You can click on that seller report and it brings up stats of where this listing has been seen on the internet. And right now it's the last 30 days, which is where most sellers are interested in. You don't want to go back six months and you can see in the last 30 days where this home has been viewed on the internet. Very, very shortly, Realtor.com will be in here. And I say shortly because I can now see Realtor.com and the overall company views, but for some reason, they aren't breaking them down to the individual listing views. So shortly, they'll figure out that little issue and we'll have that set up for you. But for the time being, total listing views, pie chart by numbers, Listing views over time, so your clients can see, boy, this is where they really get seen on the internet up front. Listing views by city and by state. So now that we have this information, we'd like to see, well, how can I set it up so my client can get this? You could download a PDF and send it whenever you want if you'd like. But what I would probably do is come into the email report. And in the email report, I can send an email right now and be done with it. Or I can schedule a report. And I'm going to type in my client's email address. So I'm going to type in Greg Fox here. And Donna's going to get a copy of the report at the same time. Naturally, it would be you. And you can say this, you can say this is an automated report or whatever you want, blah, blah, blah. And you can catch on with that. And then you decide, do I want to send it every week? Do I want to send it semi-monthly or monthly? And I must confess, I do not know the day of the week. I used to know the day of the week that it goes out. It may be Mondays. It may be Sundays. I will also tell you that whatever day of the week, you're going to get the email at the same time. So you can see it, give your clients a little bit to read it and call them and say, I've read your report this morning. Maybe we should do da, 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 da. And then you hit schedule and you're done. Any comments, any questions? That's awesome. Oh, I heard an awesome. Yay. Lance? Greg, I got a question for you. Is there on the 
site breakdown, the numbers up there uh, that breaks it down into different websites and so forth. Is there a way to put a date range on it? The only date range is right here where it goes 30 days. I do not believe you have the ability to change it from here. It's going to go back 30 days. Now, let me check one other thing. And if you want to get more um, complex, <clears throat> Emma, in agent tools, which you guys all have in the greenhouse, listing distribution, unless you save this as a favorite up in here, but this is how to find it. Agent tools, listing distribution. List track. So you scroll down just a little bit. And this takes you to the master page that sets up all the reports. And so this is everybody in the company. And as I said, realtor.com showing up here. That's why I know it's going to go out to the individual shortly. So if you look at your active listings through here, you click on one and you say, I want to see the listing stats. Uh, Michelle's a new home. Let me find something else that's active. Uh, we'll go to 143rd and see how it's done. Oh, it's not getting seen very much at all. Uh, let's go find a different listing. That would be a good report to show a seller that they may need a dramatic price reduction if it's not even getting seen. Or, or it depends on age or it depends on you know, a lot of things, but wow, Spring Hollow is not doing well either. These may be different numbers or they may be messing with the data right now because I'm not seeing Zillow on these. They may be having some uh, issues, but this is where the main data, data comes from. Uh, let me see what this one says. Yeah, see, these are, for some reason, they just had a break in the data. Lance, I don't know the answer to that question at this time. Okay. I'll do I'll a little have, bit of research on it. I'll have to come back with it later when I know all the data is in there because right now something just happened. But I believe in here you can just say, I want day, week, month, all custom was what, where I was trying to get to. Okay. So let's leave that for another time. So I, I think what I was showing you was probably the best way to do it right through here. But if you want to go through the other way, you can, and you can do some scheduling. It's just a little more complex. And I like how easy it is to point and click here. So having said that, I need to stop my sharing. And I think, Lance, you can now find a way to share from the bottom. Can you see something that says share screen? Yeah, uh, it says host, host disabled participant screen sharing. And by the number of times clients or participants, you know, not participants, but those uh, clients of agents who are clicking on your listing as well. So I really use this information a lot to show my sellers, here's the activity that's going on in the MLS on your particular listing. So if you go over into the MLS, what you will do is do a search. And if you want to do your own search for your own listing, that's fine too. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just going to get to the page where all the information comes up. So I'm going to hit my inventory and uh, hit search here. What you'll need to do is go up to um, customize. So when you get your spreadsheet that pulls up uh, on all the listings, hit customize and hit fields. When it pops up, you've got all the fields over here on the left, uh, on this side over here. Uh, those are all the fields that are available to use in your spreadsheet view. And then over on the right are the ones that you've already got in the spreadsheet. So if you go up to search and you just type in count, it's going to, oh, I didn't do it. Okay, why isn't it doing this? Okay, I know why. All right, let me go back. Da, da, da. Sorry about that. 
because I was searching multi-class, it wasn't coming up. Uh, so let's do residential. Uh, I'm going to find all actives. And I'm going to pick an area of uh, area 438 is the zone. And I'm going to hit search. So once you do your search, then all the all your information comes up here uh, in the spreadsheet form. So what you do is you go up to uh, customize in fields. And again, it's the same thing at the left side is you can add to your uh, your list and the right side is what's already there. Uh, now, if you look up here, class is residential. That's why it wasn't popping up. Now, if I go into the search and hit uh, type in count, you can see here it gives you agent hit count and client hit count. If you check mark both of those boxes and then hit add, it's going to take it from available over to selected. And if you look over here on the right down at the bottom, now those two are in my, in my list. And I'm going to uh, let's see here, go up here. I'm going to, I, what I'm doing is I'm moving it up my, where I want it to show up in my spreadsheet. So I'm going to move up the right behind days on market. I'm going to put the agent hit count and then uh, underneath that, the client hit count. The reason I'm doing that is so I can see how many days on market the house has been on, you know, how, how long it's been on the market and then see how many agents and clients have been there. So I can quickly figure out an average per day. Once you have that agent hit count and client hit count set in your spreadsheet like this, then you hit save and it's gonna save it into your spreadsheet. Now, if I'm gonna scroll over here and this are this column uh, right here and these two are the two columns. Now, what the reason I wanted to show you this is uh, let's take, for example, uh, let's sort it by price. And up here at the top, on this listing, which is highlighted in red, this is my actual listing in, in this zone. Um, I've got the lowest price house in the area, which is kind of nice. Um, <laughs> agent hit count is 92. So since this uh, house hit the market, which if you look over here where my cursor is, 814. So since August 14th, 92 realtors or MLS members have actually clicked on my listing. Client hit count over here is 64. That means the number of actual buyers that are searching in the MLS, whether it be through our collaboration center, through safe searches, through emails, whatever the case may be, if they have clicked on your listing, it keeps a track right here. So I know in 13 days on the market, I've had 92 agents click on the, on the listing and I've had 64 buyers, potential buyers click on the listing. Now, why is this important? If I wanted to, um, first and foremost, if I'm tracking the numbers for my sellers, uh, which I do on a weekly basis, I, I give them an update every Monday morning. It's one of the first things I do. Uh, I will, this is one of the numbers I pull. And I just t take a look at what was last week's number and then, and then figure out, okay, well, last week it was 70. So this week I've had 12, um, you know, 12 agents who clicked on it this week and were already the Thursday. So th this shows, I can go to my seller and say, we've only had 12 more agents click on the listing this week. Uh, we're losing traction. We don't have as much, um, interest in the property as we did when we first hit the market. Now the thing about it is we all know that when our houses first go on the market, that's when we're going to have all the, the activity right off the bat. That's a good, great way of being able to express to your sellers that pricing a home out correctly starting out is going to be the best way to go. Uh, same thing with client hit count. I can also show them, okay, last week you were at 50, this week you're at 64. So we had 14 clients. Uh, click on it. The other great thing about this, and I don't necessarily give them a report on this, but I do, I, I do take a look at it, and that is I will look at the competition. So um, I've got 92 and 64, and I can go through here and see, well, why is this one? This one's been on the market uh, since July 2nd, and it's had 136 agents and 76 clients click on the home. It's priced at 425000 you know, what is the average? 
how are we doing compared to the, the competition? So all I did was all I, all I pulled up were actives, active listings. So these are two columns that I have added to my spreadsheet that I can easily refer to when I'm doing a search. Uh, I can look at that and see what it's doing, what my listing is doing compared to the competition. One other thing that you can use this for, and, and this is very important, if um, you've got some buyers that you're working with, so let's flip the coin here, we're working with buyers now. Let's say you've got some buyers that you're working for and they reach out to you and say, oh Lance, guess what? We wanna go see uh, 13224 East Tallowood Court. Well, if the house has only been on the market for a day or two, you pull it up in the search, and if you have these hit counts already saved in your spreadsheet, you can easily and quickly go in and look at them and determine just how much activity has already been going on with that house. If it's only been on the market for a day or so, and you got 50 or, 50 or more uh, agents already clicking on it, chances are it's gonna be one of those homes that's gonna have a, a multiple offers, um, overpriced, you know, offers are gonna be above price and so forth. If it's something that doesn't have a real high number on it, then you can, uh, you know, slow down a little bit. You don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a great way of determining uh, if how much activity a potential house that your buyers want to purchase, what kind of activity they had and what kind of competition are we going to be against if we're going to submit an offer? I think so it's I'll also that pretty quick. Does anybody yeah. have any questions? Well, I would add to that, it's pretty powerful to not only have this list count, but the ones that are seen on Zillow and so on, especially for listings that have sat on the market for a while. Then you need to have a different discussion with your seller um, because a lot of people are seeing it and viewing it, but you're not getting any showings. Is it the pictures? Is it the price? Is it you know the location? Yep. What is it? So uh, we showed you really how to gather the data, not necessarily how to use it. Um, but I think in a really quick deduction, you can kind of figure out where that would go. Does anybody have any questions on Lance on his spreadsheet in general or how to get those numbers up on your spreadsheet? You guys are too easy. Uh, Erica's got her hand raised. Say something, Erica. I was just wondering, um those hit counts also, if, if you look right after you make a listing active, um, they will they will already populate in there. Um, I try to wait until shortly after midnight whenever I'm activating listings. And my goal is that that way by morning when people are waking up, then it's had a chance to filter out to like Zillow and Trulia and all that kind of stuff. So I like to look at it right after I make it active to see how many searches does it match up with? Um, the last one I put on the market last week, it started out with like 67 matches and it was in Newton. So, cause I wasn't real familiar with the Newton market on how fast things were moving. Um, and so I, I find it helpful as an agent to look initially to say, okay, there's a decent number or, oh, there's, there's only a handful. Is that good or bad? Um, so your initial numbers are going to come from what already has searches set up that it matches to. Um, okay, and just, then, just for future reference, Erica, sometimes your microphone sounds great. A lot of times it sounds very like you're talking through a straw almost. Today's one of those times where we can barely hear you. Uh, I, I think I got the gist of most of what you were saying there. I don't know if that makes a difference. Or, oops. Oh, there. Oh, there. Whatever you did. Can you hear me better now? Now I can hear oh, you perfect. That's so weird. So now it's off of speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So when, when you put a listing on the market, if you go back into your listing and look at it right away, it will have agent and client hit counts on it because I'm assuming it's basing it on what searches are already saved and which ones it matches. So last week when I put one in in Newton, um, because I'm not as familiar with how fast things are moving in that market, it said there was like 67 client matches. But I like to look at it right initially so then I can see, you know, how many more does it start to grow after a gotcha. certain market. Okay, good to know. So uh, does anybody else have any comments or discussion around how you would use this information? 
you know, the one thing that I would love to really uh, love to see our MLS do with this agent and uh, these agent and client hit counts is to give us two other fields uh, average per day. Uh, I think that would uh, help out tremendously because if, if you look at these numbers, you know, I've got 92 agent hit counts in 13 days. Uh, the one below me at price at 360 has got 58 hit, agent hit counts in seven days. Well, what that tells me is when you average this out, why is this house getting more exposure? Why have more, more agents clicking on it? Um, I know why, because the floors in my listing are shot. That's why it's getting withdrawn today, because uh, they're putting new floors in. Um, so I, that's the one thing I would love to see is just make it easier for us if they just give us the average um that would be nice to to see how we can compare to everyone else but well, I, well, i've me, actually started using this a lot when i'm working with buyers well let uh, me tell you how to uh, like. let me tell you how to get that suggestion done and everybody else you write a email to doug and say i have a suggestion for the mls committee and the committee looks at those suggestions and decides if they if they're if it warrants it or if they can do it so when you have ideas or thoughts like that, please submit them. Our MLS is somewhat fluid on those things. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, nope, that's all right. Like I was saying, I, I have really found myself. I do. I use these all the time for my sellers. Uh, I include them in my seller reports uh, that I do each week. Uh, but I have also found myself now uh, working using these with buyers. Uh, they've got strong interest in the house. I go. I take them out. We go look at something, or if I pull it up showings. I'll take a look at the ones that they are wanting to look at and then going out into the field when I'm showing them, I'll be able to let them know, guys, this house has had a lot of activity. Of course, we're going to know that by when you're, if you try to schedule <laughs> yeah. showings on showing time is another great way of determining just how much activity is going on in, uh, with the particular right. property, because you may not be able to get it scheduled if they're not allowing overlapping showings, but there's a way you can see it in showing time just, how many showings are going on for that particular listing. I think it's kind of amusing. I am going to stop recording now if there's no more questions. And there don't seem to be any.